Hey guys, a bit of a extension video from the last video that I did. Um, this one is uh, just just a bit more info that I, I I thought I'd add on to the last video. I was talking about how the HFE can change. Um, some transistors change a lot depending on how much base current and collector current they have available, um, more than others. Um, and um, I thought instantly of a transistor that comes to my mind, which is a which is kind of renowned for it, is the um, is the it's it's actually IT three O eight V, which um, in which in Russian is IT three O eight V. These are the military spec three O eight Vs. There's GT three O eight V, which is the home consumer, the home home retail general purpose one, and then there's the military spec one. And you know which one is which because it has the military spec. Ridiculous camera can't focus to save its life. There, see that little diamond? That means that it's a military spec 308V or a military spec component. That that diamond means it's um military, or it's made for military uh, for the Russian military and military purposes. So let's um hook this one up and see. There's a curve trace that we can do to see how it reacts to different um, a different uh, base current and what happens when we increase the base current, how the HFE responds. So the HFE is the gain, just to um, brush over what we spoke about last time, HFE is the gain of the transistor and it will change. Um, it, it, most transistors have a, a, a rough sort of HFE or a range of HFE and it depends on what you put in the base current, depends on what comes out the other side. Some are low gain, which means you know, like maybe 50 or 60 HFE, so if you've got one microamp on the base, you'll have 50 microamps on the, on the collector current. Some are very high, they can be in the thousands, um, so one microamp on the base, you're going to have Two milliamps. If it was if it was two thousand, you'd have two milliamps on the collector on the on the, on the collector of the of the transistor. So let's see how that what happens when we go one microamp, two microamp, three microamp, and we ramp it up and see what happens. Does the HFE change? Does it go from you know does it start out at a thousand and then as as it gets closer to fifty from one microamp to fifty microamps starts to ramp up to two thousand, three thousand, etc. This is a low gain um, transistor, so we're going to be talking probably. Um, from my experience with this transistor, should be around the, f yeah, it could be anywhere from 40 to up to around about 200. Let's take a look. Can't remember if I mentioned it, but yes, I just thought I was talking about this in the last video, and there's actually a curve trace that does this. Um, so I thought I'd do a little, um, a little anod video for just to show you um, what I was talking about in the last video. So I've got it hooked up. So we just hit test, and it will tell us what gain. The transistor has 93 HFE of 93. Don't worry if you can't see the screen. I'm going to be reading out what I'm saying anyway. Uh, sorry, what I'm seeing anyway. Uh, and the HFE of 93 is with um, collector current of 5 milliamps. So when the collector current has 5 milliamps, the HFE is 93. That's a little backward um, from the way I think anyway, because it doesn't tell you what the base current is. Well, it says down there. 5 milliamp, but I don't think that's got to do with it. We don't know what the base current is going into it because the the DCA will just change the base current until it sees 5 5 milliamp on the collector and then it will tell you what the HFE is. So it just pumps the base until it gets 5 milliamp on the collector. I think it's a safety mechanism so you, um, you don't end up damaging the DCA. I think when I spoke to, um, what's his name, Jez from um, Peak, he's, that's what he said, um, the reason why. So let's have a look at the curve trace that actually traces this. And this isn't guitar pedal related figures here. I'm just putting it in just to show you an example. So I'm going to go, it will only take four microamp minimum um, on the base. Must, again, it must be a limitation of the DCA. And then we'll chuck in, um, you know, we can just do as many points as you want, really. Let's just do 100 and then um, let's do 104, keep it easy, um, even, and then do 100 points. So it's one one point per microamp on the base. So this is the base current. It's going to start at four microamp. It's going to go up to 104. Well, it's going to try and go up to 104 microamp. And then for the for the um, for the voltage for the supply voltage, I'm going to put five and five. I know that again, that's not pedal related, but um, um, this is more this is 
um, a more purpose just to show you what happens when you increase the base current, um, how it affects the HFE or how it can affect the HFE. So I'll just, I'll just lock that and then hit start. And then we'll see what, well, we might see if I'm zoomed in the right spot. Took a bit of searching to actually find the, <laughs> the curve trace. It was miles off the screen. Um, so you can see it's plotting it now. And you can see that the this is the height of the graph is gain. So the gain is changing at the bottom. You can see um, when the when the collector current is low, um, we've got 48 HFE. Um, and as it gets as it increases, it goes up. Let me get that on the screen again because it's going off. So the base current does affect the HFE. If you have a low base current, it can affect the, um, the HFE of your transistor. So when you're measuring your transistors, it's important to know where on this line, so to speak, you are actually measuring. They don't all do this. Um, silicon's particularly stable, or some silicon transistors are partic particularly stable. So if we do this for, I'm just hooking up a um, 2N3904, which is pretty, um, well, it's classified as low gain silicon, um, and we'll just identify it first. And it tells us, I think um, last time I did one, it was 140. This one's coming up at 202. Again, collect the current of um, 4.99 milliamp, so 5 milliamp. And then if we do the exact same test, I have to zoom out because it's a high gain transistor and hit start. We're up here can see that line that's tracing um, and you'll also notice it's pretty flat um, it's not really the gain isn't really changing it's still 200 milliamp it's actually going down a little bit slightly but it's pretty stable you know um, I don't think it actually finished the test there either um, but anyway you can see that um, even at the extre um, at the extreme ends, you've got 196 HFE, and on the other side, you've got 201. So it's only about five HFE difference. So that's a silicon transistor, and that's a this is a this example the IT308V, the um, um, military spec, um, the military spec germanium transistor, Russian germanium transistor, is a bit of uh, an extreme example. I'll show you one. I'll show you another germanium. Just they. they Germaniums tend to move a bit more than silicons. I find they're not quite as stable, but that IT308V is probably a bit of an extreme example. I'm pretty sure, I've done a lot of this curve tracing with germaniums before, but I'm pretty sure that that one is one of the extremes. And it's often a point of frustration for people building fuzz pedals because they buy those transistors thinking, because in the, in the specs, I actually have a, a spec sheet somewhere here. Um, in the, in the, on the spec sheet, it'll tell you this old thing here. Um, it'll tell you, see, down the bottom here, you can see, um, this is actually for the GT308V, sorry, it's got R on the front. But it's a similar sort, you get the idea. Um, it'll say the range will be between 80 and 200, and sort of most people go, wow, that's great, that's exactly what I'm after. But the actual test conditions are with, um, they're a bit, they're, well, they're not strange, but um, they're, they're hard for me to work out, but you've got, one volt collector to base um, and a meter voltage of 10 milliamps. So I'm not quite sure how they're actually testing that, but the point is the same. The HFE changes. Often when we do, when we test for fuzz pedals, most of the fuzz pe pedals te testing circuits are down the bottom here. Um, so, you know, at 50 HFE people go, oh, they're rubbish, you know, I don't need them. And I actually pose that question to the do-it-yourself um, uh, guitar pedal community um, and the answer I got back was yes your your guitar signal would be down this end of the chart um, so this is the sort of gain that you're going to get but people report that when they do the I, when they use the IT 308 V they sound spectacular so maybe they're not here maybe they're up here I don't know but um, they sound good so either way, so um, yeah, and they're pretty cheap too. People don't buy them because they know, they know they've got that reputation um, that they don't report gain very well, you know, because they're down the bottom here. So anyway, let's test another, um, one more um, germanium transistor just to finish it off, uh, finish the video off, that is. 
So exact same test. This is a MP. Um, sorry, I'm just checking. MP42, and that is actually a lowercase B. So it's B, not V. B. Um, so we'll hit it. <clears throat> so down the bottom here, if you can see that on the screen, a little, little squiggly line. And it is kind of ramping up a little bit. Let's just get rid of that silicon one so we can see it in a bit more detail. <coughs> it is ramping up a bit, not quite as extreme as the GT308, the, sorry, the IT308V. Sorry, I get those, conf get those mixed up all the time. So it starts at 47 HFE, up to 61, 62. So not quite as extreme as the other one, but you can still see that there is a difference, partic particularly at the first part of the graph. So, you know, around, well, if we're taking one microamp per stage, you're probably looking at about around 40 microamps. You've got a bit of a, a bit of an increase there. And you've got some, and it's funny how you actually have some instability at the start with both graphs. You can see you get peaks and things at the, at the, at the um, initial part of the, of the test, it maybe the transistor is not really designed to be um, run so low. Um, they'll have such low base current. So anyway, that's pretty much it for that video. So I was just talking about that, how the HFE can change um, between transistors, and I thought that it might sort of help you to understand how a transistor works as well. Um, uh, you know, because this is kind of a, a, a sort of introduction to how how a a transistor functions. So I hope you found that interesting. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Cheers.